This is the Fixer Punk Podcast. I'm Grayson Peltier. This is a Fixing the Fixer Punk episode, which is where I try to turn a bunch of ranting and raving into strategies and ideas for both self-development and inspiration for social change. And we are a few days out from the new year, and I wanted to come back here and talk a little bit about approaches that work with your situation and with your environment and the systems that are affecting you and how to consider that as you're setting goals in the new year. Um, Like for myself, I have a rather unique and interestingly complicated situation. And I know that there are a lot of things out there that work for other people that just don't work for me. So A lot of times what people do when they are setting goals or setting up something that they're supposed to be doing to improve themselves is they try to follow an existing model and regardless of their circumstances or situation, they try to superimpose that model in there. And what we know and what I have discussed ad nauseum here is that your ability to comply with those types of models and your success with those types of models that are out there proliferated by whomever, even if it's something that has medical evidence behind it, is based upon a set of social determinants and also based upon individual variables that just cannot be accounted for on a population level. On the last episode when we were talking about fitness and liver king, I spoke a lot about evidence-based and science-based approaches um, and how that is a key to success, and it totally is. But Oftentimes, whether you're trying to change something around your fitness, your your health, your finances, your business, your work, whatever, there are going to be, especially if you have some sort of oppression or marginalization in your life, whether that be um, being a, low, a lower social class, um, race, gender, sexual orientation, and disability especially – there are going to be a lot of differences in your journey, and it is, it's difficult because you will get feedback back in, into your situation of like, okay, you're not doing as well as you could be doing, and this is how you fix it. And those things that fix it wind up being the things that make you worse. And that is a struggle, especially when you're dealing with professionals, you're dealing with the outside world that maybe doesn't fully understand your circumstances. So what you have to do is when you're making plans, you have to account for those things. You start out with the evidence-based, good, solid models, but you have to look at culturally and within your circumstances what actually will work for you based on your own history and work from there as well or modify as you go. So in my case... Um, in terms of my health, my mental health, typically the typical prescription for somebody who's got some issues with um, being able to focus and being able to um, deal deal with stress and things like that is just go to therapy and do regular like cognitive behavioral therapy. Now I know I have I have autism, I have ADHD, I have a past head injury that may play into it repeatedly going to just the same old cognitive behavioral therapy isn't helping me. And we know that. And we know the specific obstacles to why that's not helping me in a way, mostly due to my autism. So even though that's the evidence-based intervention, as I'm working to improve those things in the new year, that's not going to be the approach that I'm necessarily taking. Um, I'm obviously continuing to seek professional help. I do take ADHD medication, um, but it may not be that same therapy model that I'm, that I'm using. It may be a variety of other things. Um, and those are things that I'm exploring a lot through, through trial and error and through seeing what other people in similar circumstances are doing. There's this native knowledge. And I think that a lot of people in health and in self-development, discount the native knowledge of the people who are in the oppressed situation. And they're saying, okay, well, 
That's just the words of losers. Those are excuses made up by losers and idiots who couldn't achieve it, who couldn't hack it. But that's really not the case. The people who are living through a bad circumstance are as much of an expert on that circumstance and how to solve it as the people who have overcome that. Because we don't know the people who overcame it may have had different socioeconomic and other circumstances or just straight up luck. Um, there's a really good TED Talk by a um, doctor, Dr. America Bracho, um, from Latino Health Access um, here in Orange County, talking about how all the doctors would say that these Latino diabetic patients were non-compliant with their exercise and their healthy eating plans and losing weight. And meanwhile, it's because the recommendations just didn't make sense for their life. They were in areas with high crime. They're told to go out and and, and walk outside, and they didn't feel safe outside. Um, the kids were told to play more, and there wasn't a park for them to play in. They had difficulties accessing... Um, uh, healthier foods with their financial situation. Um, but by listening specifically to what her group did differently was that they hired people who lived in the neighborhood, like the local moms, to be part of the staff. And by listening to what their needs were, they they were able to help a lot of people with their control of their diabetes and other health conditions because they knew exactly what their needs were. It's just that nobody was listening to them. So when you can get that that back and forth with a professional instead of just a rigid model, great things can happen. And apply that to anything in your own life. Maybe you're not diabetic. Maybe you're not in a terrible situation in terms of your health um, or something that's medically serious yet. Maybe you're somebody like me that's doing it mostly for athletic or aesthetic reasons. And you can see, okay, well, this model here that I've been told of having like a specific meal prepped this and tracking everything in that way, that isn't quite working for me. I'm I'm not able to adhere to that. So what can we do to that, that'll work just as well? You have to have a certain set of metrics that you're willing to track. And that's been a struggle for me because like I sometimes get really panicky when I'm tracking my weight. And that's something where having somebody else come alongside you, somebody who understands you, who understands what you're going through and is willing to be flexible with what you're going through can help you and to help you be assured. And with somebody with ADHD like myself, um, it's difficult like holding myself accountable. But thankfully, I've done fairly well in the fitness front. I've actually... Um, obviously like I've gained back about four pounds since November through the holidays. Um, I kind of drifted off into a dirty bulk kind of deliberately, but it kind of went out of control. And, um, I was, I was, I was like, um, from, from last year, beginning of the year or from this year, beginning of the year. Um, until November, I had lost about 16 pounds. Now it's about 12. Um, and some of it was by following the advice, following the standard advice of tracking macros and all that. Um, some of it was just by almost unintentionally just by lifting weights and strength training and increasing activity and increasing protein. I wasn't like the whole time tracking. Of course, if I could have adhered to a full on like tracking and meal plan, things would have gone faster. But had I only done those things and then quit on it because I could couldn't follow the the tracking, I I I, there were foods I couldn't track, um, and because I live in an environment where occasionally I have somebody else who will cook on my behalf, not because I ask them to, but because they want to and then then I kind of feel obliged to just eat it because it's been made then if I would have given up at that point it wouldn't have been as good so in a way it's it's a lesson of don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good and also when you can get to that point where you can do things more properly, then then go for it. Do it that way and see how far you can take yourself. 
Um, but just because a specific model is not going to work for you and your circumstances doesn't mean that you're doomed to, to failure. And that's something that I have to apply a little bit more in the economic sense and the business improvement um, end of things and the work side of things. And I'm getting better about it because unfortunately I do have some external feedback. I Even though I run my own business and it's gotten quiet because it's past election season um, and I didn't really expect it to get as quiet after election season, but I'm kind of glad it did. Um, I do still have like external feedback that I have family members, specifically my mom, who I live with, unfortunately. Um, she's like, okay, you have to go get a job. You have to do a job. You have to go to a regular job in this way. And I don't know if the kinds of positions that she would want me to take are the answer for me. Obviously, I have to find a way to make an income, but I don't know if those particular solutions are the answer for me in, in that way, or at least not, maybe not the ideal answer. If over time, perhaps... Um, Perhaps I'm going in and I'm starting out with the more conventional job and just getting as many medications as possible to numb my emotions, then maybe I can stick it out. But maybe there's another way. Maybe there's a better way to do it that isn't those things. And it's just as legitimate. It is way, way more difficult. And I don't have a solution to this problem, but it's way more difficult when you have somebody else sort of in your ear saying, do it this way, do it that way. Um... But there can be different ways of doing things. You don't have to follow exactly what what you're told. Even if you're running your own business and you have like the typical business advice that's given by a book or whatever, you don't have to follow it. You use those things. Thing is, like a level of intellectual flexibility and the ability to create your own models really shows intelligence. The fact that you're able to deviate, in my opinion, from the accepted norms and you're able to do something that's outside of those norms and still have it be intellectually coherent and functional in developing your own models, that shows intelligence to me. Unfortunately, though, in the modern workplace, it really doesn't. Most employers are like, if you don't do it exactly the way we do it, if you challenge it in any way, if you think something should be done different, um, especially if it's coming from a position of because I have this limitation in my in my situation, I'm going to do things a little bit differently. I'll still get to the same outcome, but it's a little different than the way you're doing it. They see that as being automatically a bad thing. Heck, there are employers that won't even let their employees take a sufficient number of bathroom breaks. And that's a big problem. And the thing is, is that this is also how like optimal performance is enhanced by social stability and improved workers' rights and through improved class and social consciousness because you can have people that are in these lower estates of life who have excellent ideas, who have great things that they that they can do to improve whatever area of work they're in and they're not going to get listened to or they're just not even going to be in the room because either they live in the wrong zip code and they're not going to be able to come in person to the office of that company because companies are now saying no more remote work, or they're going to be somebody who has a disability who isn't going to be invited in, or you have stereotypes around race and gender. And by improving social inclusion and by specifically increasing the power of the working class and increasing the economic power of the working class and ensuring economic equity where they can be their own business or be their own um be in control of themselves as a collective perhaps through something like unionization um, or a co-op then you can see that we are including more diverse perspectives and those perspectives can lead to new breakthroughs new ideas products and services that can benefit a lot of other people but if we are stuck in this model of we have to follow this exact model, if you deviate from this model, that means that you are morally abhorrent and wrong. And there is no hope of redemption for you. Then 
we've screwed ourselves as a society out of a lot. And we have continually because of what the elites of society have told us we have to be and the models that they have stuck us in, we have deprived ourselves of a lot. We have deprived ourselves of a lot of innovations. We have deprived ourselves of a lot of people's lives getting better. And we've deprived ourselves of money that was earned through labor, the value created through labor itself. And I'm not one for New Year's resolutions necessarily. I, If you followed the Fixing the Fixer Punk series, you will know that I was following a model that uh, a skateboarding executive named Thomas Barker once kind of taught of making resolutions on your birthday. Um, but if I had one this year, I, and I think I'm going to make this it, this it um, it'll be the words of the Young Bucks. Killing the business is my New Year's resolution. As corny as it sounds, I think that is a good way to encapsulate this. Whether that's the business of politics and government, who's to be, who should be listened to, and what perspectives are considered to be acceptable, or that's actual business processes and systems that say that only workers that can sit at their desk for four hours straight, or only workers who can stand in the cashier stand for four hours straight, eight hours straight, ten hours straight, only people who talk in this way, only people who look like this can be successful or financially prosperous. That's something that needs to die in the past of this country and frankly of this world. And that is what I want to do here and what I want to prove to be possible is that we can basically kill off the model of depriving people of what their full potential is and depriving each other of what our own collective potential is just because of a set of stereotypes, because of a set of rules that haven't been questioned, because of evidence that really isn't evidence, because when you collected the evidence, you didn't bother to include all of us. When you did the study, you didn't include enough women, enough people of color, which is a common thing in medical research, unfortunately. And we can create something new in its place. And that is kind of the outlook you want to take to these kinds of things is, is that you are going to be able to create something new and even though it is kind of difficult going on your own and having your own path, that it, because there isn't as much darn as many resources. But frankly, even if you were to follow through with the resources in the way that you're given, they may not be of much help to you. Like I've gone through therapist after therapist after therapist, and the models don't quite work for somebody who has autism. The models don't quite work in as complex of a situation as I have, and you could just wind up wasting a bunch of time. Um, and, and that's something that you want to be conscious of is I'm going and I'm doing all the things. I'm doing all the things that I have to do to try to get better, but nothing is happening and it doesn't seem like it's working in any way, shape, or form. Now, you don't want to get discouraged again, but you have to kind of evaluate whether or not those things are really actually working. Um, like I was doing speech therapy to try to help with my voice and all of that. And the speech therapist actually said, you know what, you're doing well now. You can you can discontinue speech therapy. And I posted on that on the TikTok at FixerPunk, got really good response to it. And that's a good thing is when somebody is able to be conscious enough and say, the way I'm helping you is not helping you any longer. It's not serving you any longer. So let's move on and you can move on to the next phase of your life. That could be a very helpful thing. And... That is something that you want to evaluate for as well. And then, of course, unfortunately, we have the situation with a possible recession coming in, which is really just financial engineering that the system is designed in a way to deprive the working class of its gains that we have seen economically. 
and I've taken some practical steps to try to protect myself. With being ADHD, I tend to be impulsive, and I'm trying to make as many safeguards against that as possible. So I want to, in order to be able to continue to live freely and to go my own path, I know that I need to find ways to control that. And around my money, one of the things I did, did and is a good move potentially if you have money that you just want to lock up and that you're not going to need to use for six months, a year or more, is getting CDs, which are high interest. Um, there are like high interest CDs from a lot of different banks, like Bankrate.com has a good listing of them. Um, and the because the interest rates have gone up, you can keep your money safe and earn a little bit of interest. Unfortunately, though, it's a little bit of futility because the amount of interest you make 4% on $1,000 versus 4% on a million dollars, there's a huge difference between that. One of those is pocket change. The other is a salary that a person could live on. And obviously, that's why this whole anti-inflation techniques, interest rates, all this Fed stuff is benefiting the rich and not the working class because even if the working class does the right thing, it's going to help you. But it's not going to help you to the magnitude that's going to help those who all, who have millions and millions stocked away in bank accounts and can just move them around, lock them up for however long they need to just to get that passive income coming in. And of course, it creates a lot of fear because they're like, okay, now we've got a recession. You can't really challenge those models. We can't really make change. We have to just keep shrinking the size of of, of wages. We're not going to be able to give workers benefits. We're not going to be able to keep people working remotely. We're not going to be able to expand our diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts. Um, the people who have disabilities, we're going to lay all of them off. Of course, we won't tell them that's why we're laying them off, but that's why we're laying them off. So you have to go in and you have to mask and be as perfect of yourself to your corporate or overlords as possible so that you can just survive you want to take every effort to try to safeguard yourself from having to deal with the worst aspects of capitalism when it all crashes um but you also want to be able to develop yourself in the best way possible and to me there may be a little bit of financial investment that i may have to make in trying to develop myself better and i might be able to do that but i do want to keep in mind that you don't want to be dragged back in when you don't want to be. So even if you're in a job, if you're in a good job, or if you're in any situa situation where you can store away money for a while, then definitely do that. I generally recommend keeping money like st saved in like a separate bank from where you keep your normal money so you can't access it as easily. But that's just because I'm impulsive and I might use that to spend. Um... And find those solutions that work for your specific situation for whatever systemic, interpersonal, familial factors are getting in the way for you. And maybe you need to make a stronger, more aggressive change um, if you can do that. And find the models that will allow you to get what you specifically want out of life, not what somebody else wants, and that will actually get you there and not leave you feeling hopeless and distressed and like it's not going to get you somewhere and get the right support around you if you can so those are things that i'm thinking about going into the new year and i hope you found some of this helpful i am going to try to keep this way more updated and i will be back next week i hope um, I'm not quite sure the topic for next week's episode. This is sort of going to serve as like the cultural competency follow-up to the last episode and adding that extra nuance in there about individualized approaches, um, even though we covered health and fitness, also finance. So it's definitely applicable there. Um, I didn't update you as much on my personal goals as I do normally on these episodes, Um uh, but I did give you a little bit of an update there. Um, you are going to want to, if you're interested in like fitness and stuff like that, you are going to want to follow the TikTok at FixerPunk, F-I-X-E-R-P-U-N-K. Also Instagram at FixerPunk because I'm going to be posting a little bit more about what I'm doing there. 
and um, discussing what my plans are going to be and making up my mind, frankly, as to whether I keep trying to build myself up or whether I have to um, get myself back on that calorie tracking, losing weight bandwagon again. So I hope you'll join me for the next episode. I hope that you will follow the Instagram and the TikTok because you'll also get more helpful insights on ideas, more rants, more entertainment. And I hope that you will join me for the next episode, which will be coming out on Thursday of next week. I hope you have a happy new year and thank you so much for taking the time to listen.